Hello, I'm here today to discuss the fifth chapter of Marcus Borg's Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time. And uh, this chapter focuses on uh, Jesus as the wisdom of, of God. And um, I have to confess, this was not my favorite chapter. And uh, um, I think in the end, I'm not quite sure that the, uh, um, that the ball got moved all that much in this chapter in terms of, uh, of what it is that I, I really connect with in terms of Marcus Borg's uh, real, real delving into the historical Jesus. Uh, but he does broach an important question, uh, and that is how do we understand Jesus in terms of God. We call that uh, his Christology, uh, Jesus Christology, or uh, the study of Christology is how do we understand the relationship between Jesus and God. Um, and, and, and it's certainly been something that, that the church has, has wrestled with over time. And, and Marcus Borg brings up an excellent point in that uh, what we understand to be true today in 2020 uh, wasn't necessarily taken uh, as um, as truth, as definitively in the times right after Jesus or even during Jesus's life. Um, and a lot of our theology and our understanding uh, has been the consequence of years and years and years and centuries of, of reciting the Nicene Creed, uh, of reading the Gospels with the lens uh, that the councils of the church have, have placed upon us um, and our understanding of the, the Trinity as, as a basic tenet of, of Christianity. And so all of that, yes, uh, has indeed shaped us. Uh, but, uh, but the conversations over time have argued about uh, exactly where Jesus is in the in the Trinity uh, or the idea of, 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 of Jesus as a Godhead. Um, and I, I don't know exactly where Marcus Borg lands here uh, other than to say that uh, that however you look at it, that Jesus is deeply connected, deeply connected to um, uh, to God. Uh, um, he does bring up, uh, importantly so, that, um, that we have to take off the lens of what was resolved, or uh, resolved is a strong word, uh, what was won at the Council of Nicaea, uh, and that was the idea that, that Jesus was co-eternal with God, uh, that, uh, that he wasn't created. That was the big argument there at, at Nicaea, among other things, but one of the biggest was, was Jesus the first creation of all creation, um, uh, but not necessarily uh, equal to God who, uh, who was not created, the only being not created, uh, or was Jesus co-eternal with God? Uh, and, and it was resolved that Jesus was, was co-eternal. And then uh, Marcus Borg also brings up the Council of Chalcedon, which is where uh, it was argued, uh, what does it mean to say that, that Jesus uh, is fully human and fully divine? Is that um, the church's belief? Uh, uh, is it always that constant? Is, are there times where uh, where Jesus was, was, was more divine or more human, uh, and it was established that uh, those two natures were uh, uh, inseparable and, and fully there amidst the whole of Jesus' life, that he was always fully human and fully divine. Um, wasn't a human that got in, um, uh, injected with, uh, with, with divinity, uh, wasn't um, a, um, a divine being that just uh, resembled the human form, fully human, fully divine uh, uh, during the wholeness of his life. And those, uh, those things, you know, that we're, we're at 325 with the Council of Nicaea, I think 461 with Chalcedon. I mean, those things uh, were wrestled with for centuries. And so uh, it, is, it is important to understand that, that, that we take a lot for granted now um, and that that wasn't always the case. Uh, but regardless, uh, I think the, the essence of the teachings of Jesus uh, as they have substance to me, uh, is as the self-revelation of God, however we understand it. And, and I think even in 2020, uh, we are uh, aware enough of, um, of the idea that there are new, no human understandings uh, broad enough to define, define God, uh, that, that Father, Son uh, isn't a literal understanding uh, um, it, it, it somewhat contradicts itself that uh, the Jesus as the Christ in Jesus uh, as co-eternal uh, with God as, as a full Godhead um, 
wouldn't be in a literal way the Son of God, uh, but it is a way of us understanding the relational uh, connection between the two, and it's a way of us having language to talk about uh, what happens in the life uh, and death of, of, of Jesus, uh, to have that understanding of Father and Son. And it's a uh, heart relationship that we can understand and, um, and connect with and, and understand a little more about God's love for us by putting it in human human terms. But uh, but all of the round and round we go, the essence is uh, that, that Jesus uh, is of God. Um, at least that's where I land. Uh, uh, I think Borg might land somewhere between of God and deeply, deeply connected to God. Uh, but, uh, but I would argue that, uh, that so much of the substance that we gather from, uh, from Scripture is because God reveals himself fully uh, and empties himself fully in the person of Jesus. And, um, and some of that gets diminished uh, every, every uh, rung we go down in separating Jesus from the, uh, the full self-revelation of God. Uh, but, um, but we go through the, uh, uh, the exercise of trying to understand a little more deeply how we came to that way of understanding who Jesus was. And, um, and um, Borg does that first by talking about the, um, the thread that existed uh, in, the, in Hebrew scriptures for a long time, uh, that there was God, uh, the, the creator, God who handed the uh, commandments to Moses, uh, God who uh, spoke to uh, Abraham and, and promised that his ancestors would outnumber the stars, the, 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 the God that most of us uh, connect with, with Hebrew scriptures. Uh, but there's also a God who, um, who was the wisdom tradition, uh, uh, God who uh, in, empowered uh, the prophets. And, and, and that was personified uh, with the name Sophia, uh, uh, the feminine uh, side of things. And so it is sort of forward and, um, and, and very attractive to me that that, that thread of, uh, of God um, the, that has the female um, uh, side of, of our existence is, is personified. Uh, in fact, I often think of the Holy Spirit in, 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 fe in female terms, um, uh, just because the other two have been so, so much formed uh, with, a, with a male conscience. Um, you know, our, uh, Jesus is the person, uh, obviously in male form, uh, and then uh, uh, God, uh, who's been personified as Father. Uh, and so having uh, Sophia and, and that, that whole vein of wisdom literature um, and, and so as we get ready to celebrate Pentecost, it's certainly worth knowing uh, that that gift of the Holy Spirit uh, harkens back to something that already was, uh, that there was a, a God who was wisdom um, in, in our tradition long before uh, our, our Pentecost celebration. Um, and so uh, even the term Pentecost uh, uh, harkens back to, uh, to before Christianity. So, uh, so that's important. But the other things that, um, um, that Marcus Borg uh, hits on um, is that Jesus uh, connected uh, his, um, his understanding of God to Sophia. He makes references to, um, uh, to Sophia, uh, uh, in, in, in Luke especially, uh, a couple of references. Uh, and um, next, Borg goes to Paul to talk about um, what it is that's gleaned uh, as we start to picture, put together the pieces uh, to get to the divinity of Jesus. Uh, the earliest writings that we have uh, in the New Testament are from Paul, uh, and so certainly a, a very good place to go. And, uh, and Paul talks very early on about uh, Jesus uh, or the Christ uh, being there at the beginning of all creation and through him all things were created uh, and certainly certainly uh, has an understanding well well beyond um, a deep 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 spiritual person who has a, a, an, an, an intimate connection uh, with God and with uh, Sophia and wisdom um, but um, but what is the wisdom that, that Paul encounters? And I think uh, one of the most uh, subversive or alternative understandings uh, is the idea that we are justified by our faith, uh, not by our works. Uh, and this doesn't mean that, um, that those who have had uh, an incredible transformative experience 
uh, like Paul did uh, when he was converted from Saul to Paul, uh, are somehow elevated in the eyes of God, uh, but that uh, the gift is freely given from God. Uh, and unlike um, previous understandings that our ability to faithfully follow the law uh, cemented our place in heaven, uh, the idea that we are saved by grace, um, that we are justified by faith, is the idea that, um, that it is an all-graceful and, and compassionate God um, who loves us not because of our righteousness or not because we're, we're a good boy uh, or a good girl, uh, but because uh, it is God's very nature to love us and, and it is uh, indissolvable. Nothing we can do can separate us from that. And that was, and that was critical. Uh, and uh, it was explained to me in, um, in seminary uh, by a professor that uh, it's easy to think about our relationship with our, our children or our relationship with our parents, whichever direction we wanna go. Um, it is incredibly poisonous to assume uh, that we are loved because we are good. Uh, that we are loved because we obeyed the rules, because we got good grades, because we did what mom and dad told us to do. Um, we are loved uh, because it was indissolvable from the beginning, because uh, we are of them, uh, because they, uh, they gave birth to us and they nurtured us, and it was uh, almost in, in, in the DNA uh, that we would be loved, and, and that trying to earn love can be a, a pretty destructive force. Um, and uh, Borg also goes to great lengths to say uh, that truth that Paul highlights is not a Christian truth up against uh, uh, the Jewish uh, law, uh, that, that, that that exists within Christianity as well, that, uh, that often conventional wisdom, as we talked last week, um, gets co-opted by the, um, the religious norms of the time, uh, and, and, and the lens has to be turned towards that subversive uh, truth that, uh, that God is, is deeply invested in. Um, and from there, um, uh, we go to the idea of, uh, of how John understands it, because John's got a little bit more distance uh, than, than the rest of the Synoptic Gospels and, 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 and Paul's writing. Um, and, uh, and John writes that beautiful first chapter where, uh, where it's hard to argue uh, that, that John sees uh, whatever nature is in Jesus. Uh, as something that was co-eternal, that, uh, 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 that from whom all things were made, uh, uh, that uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and all things came into being through Him. Uh, and uh, he even substitutes the word logos, meaning word, uh, and then substitutes the word Sophia, uh, and so that we understand <coughs> uh, not the person of Jesus of Nazareth, uh, but that God Spirit within uh, is what was co-eternal with God, what was there from the very beginning. Uh, and that it's all of the other lenses that we have been wearing for 2,000 years uh, that connect us so quickly uh, from uh, that understanding of the word uh, that, that was with God uh, to Jesus of Nazareth. Um, and and, and the, there's a few leaps there. Um, uh, that Jesus was the human form uh, of wisdom, that Jesus was the human form of the Word, that Jesus was the human form of God fully revealed, um, I think is, is a truth that we probably would get pretty close to, uh, to agreeing on. Um, uh, again, some of the, the details about um, the fullness of, of that co-eternal, but I, I think all of us can understand um, that, that the metaphor of father and son uh, is a human construct that just allows us to understand uh, the depth of, uh, of one, how fully God was revealed in Jesus, uh, but how fully his love was revealed uh, in, in the offering of his son and in Jesus uh, pouring his life out for us. Uh, that in that, it, it gives us a, a real concrete understanding of, uh, of God's love for us and, and uh, of God's, uh, teaching and God's dream for the world. And, uh, and Borg speaks a little bit about uh, that image of kingdom as well, uh, and that that's also um, uh, less to be understood in terms of uh, uh, an apocalyptic uh, 
uh, event that would occur or what, what, what it would look like if that apocalyptic event would occur uh, as much as it is uh, Jesus sharing with us God's dream for creation, uh, God's will for the world. And, uh, and in that, uh, there's that alternative wisdom of this is what the world looks like. This is the construct that's been created. Um, but this is that alternative reality that could be if, if we all coalesce around uh, the nature of God and the dream of God. So I hope this helped you a little bit. Um, again, I, um, I think there's some important uh, meat in there, but it wasn't really my favorite chapter in terms of, uh, of really focusing on uh, uh, the dynamic and, and, and really engaging person of who Jesus was uh, beyond the, the Savior of the world. And so uh, uh, I encourage you to keep reading and, uh, and we'll uh, pick up with chapter six, I believe, chapter six next week. God bless you. Bye.